Hey, you alright there? I'm real good. So, uh... Super good. So I saved all of the Canadian whiskeys we were gonna do this week for today. Yeah. From Teresa. Yeah. The patron saint of Canadian whiskey. So... Specifically. Not Canada, just Canadian whiskey. Here's the thing. People think I don't like Canadian whiskey. That's not true. <laughs> it's just... Most Canadian whiskey, I know exactly what I'm going in for, and... And then there it is. Now, like, one out of ten? It's like, oh, damn, that's surprising and wonderful and delicious. Yeah. It's just, it's, there's no, uh, there's no sex in that violence. There's no there there. Yes. <laughs> so, well, so, here's what's happening right now. Is this, is this the Friday? Of this the, is Friday. This is donation day. Yeah, okay. I You're have, going from nothing right. to six whiskeys in a row. I haven't eaten in 48 hours. Yeah. All right. You all right? We'll find out. So, if I remember correctly in our history, I'm going to throw you a bone to get you back in the game. You ready? Okay. Yeah. If I remember correctly in our history, yeah. we both almost died. Okay. And then we were saved yeah. by whatever life-giving whiskey was in your glass Here's at the, the time. Thing. I saved you, and then you goaded me into... Punching the eagle in the... <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you, you, you goaded me into uh, doing a very dangerous trip. Up into space time, oh yeah, 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 cosmos, and this bigger. But it bigger, worked, didn't it? But I, no, that's not my point. My point is, there is no reward without risk. When it Rex. came down to it, I was looking out for you. <laughs> so I was looking out for you. And you, you had to make the hero's journey. Yes. You had to find your crucible. I so while well, you get the things. And up, here's your reward. This. Is that 33 year old art bag? Oh, nice. I just I'm gonna try to bring you, you back. Sucker, this is Canadian mist. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to bring you back a little bit, a little bit of a. Oh, this is. Yeah, right? This is a trial by fire. Might, you might wanna save that this for is, after we're done with all the Canadian whiskeys. This is trial by fire, man. Here's the thing. So, art bag is already a really robust whiskey. Mm -hmm. I am so weak right now. <laughs> like this pr probably just knocked me right on my ass. I usually take two steps at a time coming out the, mm -hmm. coming up the stairs. Here. Yeah, so totally. One step just very, very fucking And not fast. one step with each foot, like one step and then plant. And then, and then one step and plant. Catch your breath. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I, well, I figured it's gonna be nice to start you out with some friendly... Teresa, thank you. Yeah, ease me into it. This is everything, the rest of everything she brought, although I think she brought Amrit as well, but... This is Alberta Premium. And you know it's premium, because it has that fancy little... Has there ever been a whiskey with the name Premium on the label? That had a screw top? That, no. Put the name Premium on the label that was actually, like... Truly was premium. Really, like, exotic process and really... Probably top not. Top shelf and... So this is you know, Beam Suntory. Woo! Yeah, that's rubbing alcohol with a little bit of maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> that's it on the nose. That's no, exactly. I will tell you that Alberta is from Alberta Distillers, right? And they're still one of the few distilleries making 100% rye whiskey in Canada. Okay. Remember we had their 10-year-old Alberta Springs? And we actually kind of dug it a little bit. For the sake of the narrative. That was James McKittrick. Yes. And Teresa also gave us a 10-year-old Alberta Springs. This is their more budget-friendly... Okay. But not yet bottom of the line. We also have the well, bottom of the line somewhere. It's making a case for it. This the thing I like about this one. Once you get past the initial, whoa, that's a rubbing alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> is that it's not. It's still got some character. Yeah. Right. It's probably going to be better in cocktails than by itself. It'd make a great cocktail whiskey. Sure. But it's not boring. It, it's trying to stand on its own two feet. All right. All right. This is what I'm saying. I haven't even tasted it yet. Is there another whiskey after this? Oh, yeah. There's that, five more. I know, but one that I I can look forward to. Yeah, I'm gonna try to save what I I'm gonna try to save one that sounded interesting for the last one. Okay. I will tell you that uh, this one Canadian whiskey of the year from Jim Murray, <laughs> the dude who's always giving everybody whiskeys of the year. This one whiskey of the year, one, two, three, four years. No. Four years in a row is Canadian whiskey of the year. No. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Canada. I think he gave Canadian whiskey short shrift. <laughs> There's better, more interesting Canadian whiskeys. <laughs> we still keep using short shrift. Uh, all right. See, that different it's, people have gotten all kinds of different things in here. All I'm getting is like the most generic of the rice spices. 
with a little bit extra alcohol burn. No, is this? It's forty percent. It does not taste like forty percent. Tastes like fifty to fifty-five. He said. Now, is this like a Canadian rye or is this a rye? No, rye? this is actual rye. Hundred percent rye grain. I didn't know you could fit maple into a rye. Yeah. Must be used casks or something that's mm. creating that effect. Yeah, it's just the alcohol that's throwing me off. The actual flavor in there is a nice flavor. Yeah, it's but it's very just really simple sweet rye spice, and not uh, anything you would struggle or compete with. Man, I'm try yeah, I'm try I'm struggling to find that uh, classic rye. I don't even know if I'd put it in a rye based cocktail flavor. It, it wouldn't bring to the table what I expect in a rye it, based cocktail. It would give the uh, the the maple sweetness that you're. So familiar with the Canadian whiskeys. Yeah. Oh. All right, we're moving on. Okay. Yeah, here we need a dump glass. <laughs> Hang on a second. Where is that? Royal Reserve. I don't even know if we have a dump glass anymore in here right now. All right, we got the plastic bottle. Here, we'll glass use this. shaped. We're using this whole specimen. Here's the thing. I'm not. I'm glass. not hating on the uh, on the plasticity of this. You know why? Hmm. Because sometimes fits right in the pocket. Sometimes you just need a flash shaped bottle. You know when? Uh -huh. You know when? I'm trick or treating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel brought his kids. Which is coming up pretty soon. Brought his kids to my neighborhood and he had cigars and whiskey and we're just in the street. Yeah, we're just, <laughs> we're just walking down the middle of the street while the kids go from house to house just smoking and drinking whiskey. We're, we're, the, we're the duo that you want to go trick or treating with. Everyone else is like, hey, we got hot cocoa and cider for everyone for the walk. And we're <laughs> like, ah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Royal Reserve is one made uh, from Hiram. This is a Hiram Walker brand. You know, it's actually owned by someone else that's now. Slightly I'm less. Trying to remember who bought them. That's slightly less rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol on the on the nose there. So this is Corby owned brand. It's one of their budget line from Corby. Yeah, Corby. That Corby. It's doing what Corby, Woo! doing what Corby does. This is not. A typical Canadian whiskey smell. I got a lot to say about Corby. Royal Reserve, and there's really not anything on the bottle other than 40% and the name. There's something going on in here, though. This is not just an invisible, buttery Canadian no, whiskey. There's, there's this a, is, uh, has more character than the one that we just tried. But it's bright. It's grain heavy, it smells like. Less rubbing alcohol than the one we just tried, though. Yeah. Yes. It's still very bright and, and grainy. Right. right now. When I say grain heavy, what I mean is Ooh. like column still grain. Oh, now it's sweet. I gotta tell you though, the nose on the one we just tried, mm -hmm. inferior to this is nose. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's nose. The taste of the one we just tried, Super better good. than this. Yeah, this one just turned into can like uh, like really corn candy, really like a flat one. What do you call the uh, sweetness? The candy that candy they corn? recycle every single year because no one ever actually eats it. Candy corn? Yeah. What was it Louis Black said? Every year they go around they collect the candy corn from the trash cans and the dumpsters and the bags where it's been left and they repackage it for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get a Dixie cup? Yeah, it was a dump cup. Go ahead. <laughs> Cut to close up on Daniel. <laughs> Nothing's happening over here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't do it, man. This is this is like you took a whiskey and you added a teaspoon of sugar to your glass. Well, see, maybe it's me still recovering. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find whiskey flavors in there. Yeah. I'm just getting like alcohol and, and sugary sweetness. Yeah, that's getting closer to a liqueur than a whiskey. Teresa? You gave us some weird stuff. Well, we did have a couple of good now, ones early in the week. Is she trying to make a case for Canada with this? I don't really know. Teresa's going to have to explain herself. She's now involved with a new distillery in Canada, and she's pretty excited about what they're making. Okay. Ooh. All right. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go straight to Black Velvet Deluxe. She Ooh. gave us Black Velvet, and she gave us Black Velvet Deluxe. We're going to skip Black Velvet. That's almost as good as premium. The Deluxe is somewhere around eight years old, supposedly. This is also, this is the Black Velvet Distilling Company. Oh, weird. This smells like a beer can. You ever, you ever try to, uh, when you were a kid, you go around collecting empty cans? Does this smell? At game, at old football games in order to make some money? Does this have like a malty sweetness to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It smells like 
It smells like when I was, when I was a kid, we, uh, sometimes we go around collecting cans in the neighborhood. Yeah. And when you pick one up that still had a little bit of old beer or malt with malt beverage in mm -hmm. it, and you, you squeezed it to crush it and put it in your bag, and this fumes came out, and it, it that's sort of what I'm getting here, this aluminum slight tinged yeah. beer can. It's like I'm sipping a 40. This originally was called Black Label. It was originally called Black Label, and then the, ma the master store was like, we should change the name to Black Velvet because it's so smooth, right? But it was well, known. Is it smooth? So here's the funny thing. Oh, weird. It tastes like flat beer. Are you getting that? Yeah, but it does have, here's, it's, it's a watery sweet yeah. smoothness. And then on the end, there's a little bit of a bite. Bing! Maybe that's the oak that's showing up in the eight years. Maybe. Maybe that wouldn't be that bite in the generic black velvet. Yeah, I think that's that oak. It's, maybe it's a, like a little, little bitterness, little, little oak bitiness. Yeah, just at the very end. My favorite little uh, thing I found was, so Shinley's made this. Shinley's is actually involved in American whiskeys as well. Yeah. But uh, Shinley's and it was the only liquor available to submarine Toby's officers and... at Midway in World War II. Okay. So at Midway in World War II, Remember the Battle of Midway? The submarine officers, this was their only whiskey that they could get their hands on. Hmm. And it was held in such low regard, it was known by the Navy yeah. as Shinley's Black Death. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to make a whiskey called the Black Death. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Okay. Man. Sorry, Canada. We're fixing we know you have good stuff, and I have a bunch of it back here. It's Ugh. just none of it that Teresa left for us. I think she was playing a prank on us. It feels like this is one of those things that you sort of have to grow up with in order to love it. Really? You know what I mean? Like, like have you ever had a food, and I mean Canadian whiskey as a genre. Right. You ever have a food um, where other people are like, oh, that's disgusting, but to so. you it's normal. So. Coney Islander in Oh, Oklahoma. in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are weird as shit. Oh, are you kidding me? They're amazing. Yeah. They're fantastic. Those little tiny hot dogs. Yeah. Chili and cheese and the onions and chili powder. I'm not buying it. All right. So the other one was, uh, oh, so there's like, like the same thing in movies. When I was a kid, there was like TV shows and movies that I thought was the greatest thing ever made. It's brilliant. Genius. The pinnacle of creative achievement. It was. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, I love that movie. And the, then how the movie came out. Oh, mm -hmm. Then the live action movie. That was glorious. The live action movie. Yeah, that was the first time I heard a curse word in the movie. And I was watching the uh, back in Siskel and Ebert, the, TV, the movie critics, mm -hmm. and they were reviewing the movie. It's the first time I ever like bothered to watch an actual professional <laughs> movie review. And they're talking about the movie, and they're shitting on the movie. I'm like, what? So pissed off. What? These guys know nothing. They're, They're obviously idiots. idiots. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like, decades later, I rewatched the movie. Yeah, it's kind of a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just remember that was the first time I'd heard a character. We're in the movie. I'm with my cousins and some of my friends. Right. And there's that point when, is it like Michelangelo or somebody's running through and he goes, Damn! He shouts it through the whole city, right? right. And all my friends, ever, all the kids in the movie, they're like, <laughs> He said damn in the movie. <laughs> this was uh, back in the innocent era of the right. 80s when... It was new for kids to hear curse words. Although there was a movie, that same movie, we went to go see it in the theater, and somebody, some asshat, uh, obviously some high school punk, thought it would be funny to play the trailer for Chucky, the doll, uh, before the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. That was funny. And I had nightmares about that damn doll for like a year and a half. You know what movie gave me nightmares that really hmm. shouldn't have? I've told you this. I'm telling you this now. The movie Cocoon. Oh, that was creepy. With like the old people. Yeah, and, like and the, the weird pods in the pool. They're yeah. swimming around the pods. Yeah. And the lady who looks all awesome until she takes her skin off. That freaked me the hell out, man. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, uh, all right. So this is Highwood Distillers, Canadian another, rye whiskey. Another one of these. Made from prairie rye and wheat another and natural water. Yeah, I just I kind of I dig. I wish there was nicer whiskey. You know what else that these guys make? In bottles. They're like also this. responsible for the ninety that we did a review of on Monday, and they're also responsible for that weird white owl thing that we did. No, I remember that ninety. Remember the white owl? The ninety or the ninety nine, whatever it was. It, it was being not bad. Yeah, you remember the white owl we reviewed ages ago? That's clear, but it tastes like aged whiskey. Sure. They do that one too. Oh, okay. 
It's like a three-year-old age whiskey or something like that, redistilled. Same, same type of vibe, man. That It's kind of a thin sweetness on top of some alcohol. Yeah. I can't tell the... Right now, I'm having a hard time telling the difference between the last four things we tried. All right, I'm moving on to the final one because I was really hoping this one would be interesting. <sighs> Take me home. Gooder, Gooder ham and warts. <laughs> now, that is an old name in whiskey. It once was the largest distillery in Canada. It's 44.4%. Yeah. And uh, then they merged with Highland Walker yeah. and then got bought out. I think we're making good time on this donation day. <sighs> yeah, it's only, what, 17 minutes? You know why? Because we want it to be over with. I'm too tired <laughs> to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> Rex is not arguing. He's just going, yeah, well, same thing. Yeah, 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 what you said. Yeah, that's, what you what he said. That's the thing. All right, so Gooderman & Wurtz is an old Canadian distillery. Old Canadian distillery. Yeah. It's, uh, it's facility on the Toronto waterfront was closed in the 90s, but now it's known as the Distillery District. It's right. art. It's an arts and arts district. All right, now we're getting, we're getting, Toronto. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> okay. Nothing too extravagant, but... Ooh, that actually has... So, okay, so, we got something real here, folks. We got apple. We got oak, something real. We got some character. We got apple. We got the oak. What else? Oh, man, I'm getting everything. Um... There is there's a little bit of vanilla. Apple. Uh, there's definitely like the more of the toffee note than the honey note normally. Yeah. It's kind of nice, like a brittle peanut, brittle kind of thing. There's mm -hmm. floral notes in there that I've never picked up in a. You, you say I was, I was about to say like a like a light potpourri. But yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's an amalgam of flowers. It's not just yeah. like a single flower. It's a it's a flower vase with a flower arrangement. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's got real taste. Oh, and are you getting a rice spice from that? I am. It's four grains, right? This is a four grain whiskey, so yep. all the four. And I'm getting a weird kind of... Um, it's a bitter finish. Yeah, there's something in there that's candy. But it's like... Um, it's like candy? Oh, it sort of reminds me of Big League Chew. The dusty sugar. Oh, you know yeah. when you pull out the little strips I and there's like sugar dust yeah, on I it? I got you. If I had to pick one, I would... I would be fine ending with this one. Do you yeah. want to have a little sip of your glorious, freakishly expensive art bag? Yes. All right. Walk me through. What am I? What am I enjoying here? Why was this amazing again? We'll link the actual review he did up here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because. Oh, the it's, ham. It's like a smoke. It started ham. in bourbon cask, was moved to sherry casks, and then set aside. It's maximum ham. Oh man, it is. To me, it was dark plums mixed with maple glazed smoked ham. Yeah. Mixed with a little bit of the salty finish you get I, from salted. I get like a dark chocolate too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's rich and glorious. Now my memory when I tasted it the night of the event was that it was more sherry than whiskey. But now that I've had a chance at it, I get the Ardbeg classic briny notes and iodine notes. Damn. That's good though, right? Damn. That sort of makes you look at this and go, meh. Well, I mean, that, to be fair though, totally different price points. Totally They're different price point going and- Going for totally different things. Totally different goal. Right. Yeah. Cool. But we know what our home turf is. Well. And this is why you leave uh, Canadian whiskey reviews to, to, to have him, uh, De, uh, De Kermagraw. Did Who's you just, that? Did you, wait, hold on a second. Was that the actual name? De Kermagrau. Because it sounded like you couldn't remember the name. And no, it's De Kermagrau. Like, I'm Rur probably mispronouncing the end of it, but I think it's De Kermagrau. And, uh, or Grow. Yeah, this Kermagrow. is Daniel Kermagrau. De Kermagrau. We'll call it Grow. And, uh, no, he's like the world's foremost Canadian whiskey expert. Written multiple books. I actually met him at Balconis. At the Balconis release, he came down to be a part of the Rye release. Who is this? Da uh, Davin... De Kermagraw. And he's the world's foremost Canadian whiskey expert. And his opinion was that Halle had better tasting notes than I did. <laughs> Which he told me very specifically multiple times when we were hanging right, out. Right, so he busted your ball? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. good. <laughs> because, because I was trying really hard not to trot this one out there. <laughs> but. Being the world's foremost expert on Canadian whiskey is like being the world's foremost expert on... Rainbows. Ah! 
Oh, wow. Rex, you're just not making any friends. You're just not making any friends. <laughs> I'm back, baby! I'm back! <laughs> we need to buy you the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Unless they're Canadian. <laughs> Except Canadians. <laughs> Teresa, thank you for the random journey. Yes, thank you. Some of them were actually good. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal lovers' hearts. If you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.